In this assignment, I'll be discussing how notational analysis can be used within biomechanics. Biomechanics is a study of the uh, mechanisms relating to the movement or structure of living organisms. Ultimately, the purpose of biomechanics is to enhance performance and minimise the risk of injury. By analysing a person's biomechanics, whether it be a skill or technique or their overall performance in the game, it's possible to then make changes in what they're doing to ensure they're getting the most out of the effort they're putting in, which means they are performing at their optimum. Biomechanics allow different techniques and skills to be taught properly in a way that minimises the risk of injury, from using an improper technique as well as optimising their performance to allow them to perform as well as possible in that situation. It also helps with muscle recruitment. In order to carry out certain movements, muscles need to fire in a specific order and biomechanics can assess whether a person is doing this properly and if not, how they can fix it. Biomechanics can also be used for testing and analysing equipment. For example, many different running shoes are adapted in order to correct biomechanical issues with the body such as the inversion of the feet. Hughes in 2004 stated that notational analysis is an objective way of recording performance so that key elements of that performance can be quantified in a valid and consistent manner. Notational analysis is objective, meaning that it's based off facts completely and cannot be biased. It revolves around gathering and analysing information gained from observing sporting performance in a competitive situation. In this, they will be monitoring and analysing movement patterns, strategy and tactics within the sport and the person's technique. The way in which notational analysis um, is carried out has evolved over time. To begin with, in 1977, Sanderson came up with different symbols to represent 17 different strokes in squash. He spent around five to eight hours practising this to be able to record the information as accurately as possible. There was an average around 1,000 shots and so he ended up with about 30 pages of information for, of his recordings uh, for shots which were successful which were unsuccessful but because all the data was handwritten and there was so much of it the process wasn't very efficient however then in 1987 Hughes decided to do the same thing but using a computer to compare successful to unsuccessful shots he also extended this to include tennis as well as squash and began analysing and observing patterns of play too following this he also began to analyse the tactics as well as how uh, the normative data has changed over the years due to advances in performance and equipment. Uh, for example, in 10 years, squash rallies decreased from 20 to 12 as the performance was improving so much. When using notational analysis, a, performer, a performance criteria is devised. These are the things that the observer will be looking at within the performance. And according to Hughes and Frank in 2004, a performance indicator is a section or combination of action variables that aims to define some or all, as or all aspects of a performance. Not all performance criteria can be applied to all sports, and within those sports, not all criteria will be relevant to each player as they play certain positions. These can also be aimed at the entire team or focus on specific individuals within the team. There are three different factors that can be analysed within notational analysis, movement, tactics and technical. Notational analysis can allow a person to analyse both their own and other players' tactical play within the game. Similarly, they can also track individual players' movements using movement schematics. In terms of the technical analysis, this is typically recorded as a percentage in terms of them carrying out a technique or skill successfully and unsuccessfully. Movement can be analysed and observed using movement schematics. This allows a person to see where a player moves around most, which will likely be linked heavily to the position they play. This will also allow the observer to see how much distance a player is covering in the game and this information could then be used to alter their training. If it shows that they make a lot of short, short sharp runs, then it may be worth improving their speed during training, whereas if they were covering vast areas during a game but were struggling to do so, it would be worth working on their stamina during their training. This can also be used to work out their work rate based off how much movement is shown on the schematic in combination with possible heart rate data would provide an accurate um, description as to how hard a player has worked in a game. Technical analysis can also be very useful when carrying out notational analysis. It allows the observer to recognise tactical patterns of play and the outcomes of these within the game or performance. This can be beneficial whether it be for your own team or even for the opponents. By analysing your own team's tactics, it allows the team to understand which ones work and which ones don't. It can even allow them to see which stages or phases of a certain set piece don't work, which can allow them to work on it and improve it to increase their success rate. 
Similarly, if you were to carry out tactical analysis on the opposing team, it can give your own team a heads up on their set pieces that they might try to do. And uh, that way you can counteract it uh, to stop them from getting an advantage. In addition to this, it can also allow you to expose weak points in their playing method or formation, which the team can then exploit to give them advantage over the other team. Notational analysis allows a person to divine quantitatively where a technique fails and excels within a sporting performance. This is typically shown as frequency or percentage of attempts, success and also fails. For example, in basketball, someone may observe a player's layups in the game, noticing that they attempted 10, but only three were successful, would indicate to a coach that they need to work on their technique for their layups and training. This could then be taken further, where they were able to take note of how many were right-handed and how many were left-handed, as one might be weaker than the other, so it'd be beneficial to work on the weaker side in training to improve their overall success rate. Here's the performance criteria that um, I use for my notational analysis I carried out when observing a game of basketball. A two-pointer shot is made either inside or on the three-point line on the court. A successful short shot is worth two points. A three-pointer is a shot made beyond the three-point line on the court and a successful shot is worth three points. A layup is worth two points and involves a player bouncing the ball off the backboard and into the basket with one hand whilst taken off on one leg. A free throw is essentially a penalty type shot in basketball. One player stands on the free throw line and takes a free shot at the basket. All other players have to stand outside of the key and can only move inside the area once the ball has left the player's hands. Rebounds occur when an unsuccessful shot is made and a player then regains possession of the ball. There are two types, offensive and defensive. An, o an offensive rebound is where someone on your team shoots, misses and then another player from your team gets the ball again. And defensive is where the other team tries to shoot, misses and then someone from your own team wins the ball. These are relevant to the person I'll be observing as they play a forward attacking role which will involve shooting, so the two pointers, three pointers, layups and free throws, as well as getting the offensive rebound. Data is collected by recording what you observe a player do during their performance, whether this be live or a video recording. In order to track their movements, it's possible to create a movement schematic which accounts where a person moves within the game. This can be done by hand, however to get a more accurate recording it would be better to use a GPS that can accurately calculate where a player moves within the game and how far they travel. Technical analysis can also be carried out by simply tallying how many of each skill the player successfully or unsuccessfully carries out in a game within a table such as the one shown here. Alternatively, this data can be inputted into a computer rather than being recorded on pen and paper as it may make things easier for analysis later on. Due to natural human error, it is often a good idea to record the game on a camera too, as the likelihood of being able to observe everything that goes on within a game is quite unlikely. Whereas if you have it recorded, then you can go back over the footage to check for anything you've missed off. Notational analysis can be done with very little equipment, pen, uh, such as just a pen and paper. However, if you want to get more accurate and reliable results, then it would be better to use a computer for data input, a camera for later video analysis, and some form of GPS tracker for the movement analysis. Here's some um, notational analysis carried out on two players within a basketball game. So there are both pros and cons to notational, notational analysis. Um, on the positive side, um, having all the data from one place makes it easier to, anal to analyse the performance to see which bits need um, more work on them. It can be done cheaply with minimal equipment, depending on how accurate you want your results and it's very good for assessing a person's streaks and weaknesses very clearly and this can also be used um, to choose a player's um, specific role in a game. Um, you can use very advanced technology to do it which will give you the most um, accurate results and it's also good for getting information on the opposing teams um, the negative side is that it can be hard to watch one player through the whole game and if you're meant to be doing more than one player then you're going to need multiple people to keep an eye on each player. Um, not all skills are relevant to all positions. So for example if you were doing football and the criteria was shooting the likelihood of the def a defender having many shots is quite unlikely and in the analysis that could come across as making them look like a worse player when in fact it's just that that wasn't applicable to their situation. 
it doesn't always give context so it could tell you that something's failed but you don't necessarily know why for example taking a three-point shot um, in basketball in training they might be very good at this but that's because there's um, different environmental factors that could play a role such as the other players within a game which aren't accountable for in training um, not all skills are measurable um, for example in dance um, it's more about how well a thing is carried out as opposed to how many of them are done um, the results won't always represent the performance so someone could potentially play very well but the results from the notational analysis just aren't quite applicable to what's actually happened and won't give an accurate representation. And obviously a certain level of knowledge is needed by the person carrying out the analysis as to know what they're looking out for within the game.